welcome back. Uh, today I'll be doing a review of the Giver Quartet. And the quartet is made up of the Giver, Gathering Blue, Messenger, and finally Sun. And the quartet is written by Lois Lowry. This is a um, kind of a middle grade dystopian series. And I'm going to start out uh, by reviewing the Giver. Like I said, it's a dystopian society. But when you first start reading the Giver, it almost seems utopian. It seems very idyllic, very peaceful. Uh, it's not it's set in the future, but there's it's very non-technical, uh, non-technology, is what I really mean, um, almost agrarian um, society. And uh, there's a feeling of what they call sameness. There are no divisions. Everything is equal, the same. No, there's no color differences. There's no hatred, no pain, no fear. It seems, like I said, very idyllic, very utopian. And the story follows a young boy by the name of Jonas. He's just reached the age of 12, and he's about to enter the ceremony. When you reach the age of 12, it determines what your future career will be, what you'll be studying, what you'll be entering into. It could be agriculture. It could be working with the elderly, the newborns. But he gets the singular honor of becoming the receiver of memory. And these are the memories that existed within the community before sameness came. And there's always one person within the community who retains these memories in case they are needed in the future for making a decision of some sort. So he goes to meet with an elderly gentleman who's now referred to as the giver. He was the previous receiver. And the giver imparts this knowledge to him of these memories. And as Jonas encounters these memories, he learns a lot of things about his society, a lot of disturbing things of, of the things that, that they no longer have, of the lack of freedom. And he has to kind of come to this decision as to whether to stay or leave. And the decision is kind of comes to a head uh, when um, a certain thing involves this young boy by the name of Gabriel. And the book kind of concludes with him having to make this rather treacherous uh, escape from the community with this young boy. And then it, when it ends, you don't know what happens to these characters. And um, I thought that would continue in the next book. Overall, I liked the world building and the writing style of it. It was a little bit slower paced. Um, on kind of reflection now, I see that the writing style suited this storyline. It wasn't quite so slow. Um, but I gave this overall, the first book, four stars. When I picked up the next book, Gathering Blue, I assumed I would find out what happened to Jonas and Gabriel, and yet it didn't mention them at all. What Gathering Blue is is really a companion novel to The Giver, and we meet an entirely new character by the name of Kira, set in also a similar dystopian society, but her society is a little bit different. Um, she's a young girl who's recently orphaned. Uh, she has a twisted leg, so she is a disabled person in her society, which is something that's unheard of. Uh, anyone with, born with a dis disability or who's weak is sort of taken to the fields and, and left basically to die from hypothermia. And um, her mother, prior to her death, had fought for this child. She would not let um, the society do this to her, her daughter. But now that her, her mother is gone and her protector, she's kind of on her own, and she has to kind of prove her worth to society um, and not be taken to the fields. Uh, she has a, a young boy by the name of Maddie. He's sort of an uneducated kind of little thief who kind of supports himself through, through that. But he, he helps her a lot. And uh, so, anyway, it's, it's determined that she does have an ability. She's a magical weaver. I mean, she just creates the most beautiful images that they almost come alive. You'd have to kind of read the book to find that there's this hidden meaning behind all that. I don't want to get into too much detail with it. But that does, um, she does prove her worth, so she's allowed to continue living within the community. And through the course of her studies and, and learning to weave this, um, through weaving itself, uh, she learns a lot about, about the society she's living in, like Jonas did, um, through his memories and things. And they're very disturbing aspects of this community. Maddie decides he's going to leave, wants Kira to come with her, but she, in the end, decides that she must stay and see if she can somehow create changes within the society. Um, so this book was, was much slower. I was a little bothered by the fact that it didn't continue this story of the giver with the characters that we knew from there. But like I so said, the pacing was really kind of slow on this one. I overall gave that one like three stars. But when you get into the third book in the series, in the quartet, uh, Messenger, this is a direct sequel to Gathering Blue, and we follow Maddie's character after he has left um, his friend Kira. This is like six years 
after Gathering Blue, about eight years after The Giver. So there's quite a time frame that's gone by now. Maddie's grown, he's educated. Um, he's approaching what they call in this new village he's living in. This is quite a very idyllic village. Everyone is welcome here. It doesn't matter if you're if you're disabled, um, poor, weak, if you're escaping from another village. Everyone has been welcomed in this village, such as Maddie. And he's he's really grown and thrived here. And he's approaching the ceremony, what they call the naming ceremony, hoping to become named messenger. You're kind of named based on your profession. The leader of the village is known as leader. The healer is known as healer. So he's kind of been a messenger boy within the village and also carrying messages beyond the village. So he's hoping that that will be his his name, hence the name of the book. Um, like I said, it's always been a very idyllic place to live in, but um, things are starting to change. This character kind of comes into the village uh, very evil. Um, the, character, the, the townspeople seem to start changing. They're no longer as welcoming as they were. They want to shut the village down to outsiders. And uh, Maddie realizes that if they do that, that his friend Kira will not have a chance to join them. And he sets off on this journey to try and bring her back. I like the pacing of this book the most out of all of them. There was more action. It, it just moved faster. This intriguing character from this book, I wanted to know more. Overall, I gave that one five stars. Um, and then we come to Sun, which is the final installment in the Giver Quartet. A long-awaited one, by the way, because a lot of... Uh, I read the letter that was included with this, and a lot of readers had written to um, the author always wanting to know what happened to Gabriel, what happened to Jonas, what happened to these characters. So finally she has released Sun, because she wanted to know too, she said. Um, so this book is broken up into three parts, and the first part kind of parallels the um, time frame of The Giver. In fact, it takes place within the same community Jonas grows up in, and our main character is Claire. She's two years older than Jonas at the time. She's 14. And when she went through the ceremony of 12, it was determined she didn't really have any specific skills um, that that would lead to other careers. So she's, um, but she is healthy and strong, and they decide that she will become a birth mother. In this society, um, the parental figures are sort of put together. You're given a spouse. Um, they figure who you're most suited for, and then uh, a child is given to these parental figures, and they come from the birth mothers. And she gives birth to a young boy, and uh, the boy is taken away. But the, the birthing doesn't go quite so well, and it's delivered by cesarean section. And they determine that she's no longer suited to become a, a, a future birth mother. That, that was it. So she's sent to work in, like, the fishery department and kind of forgotten about. But she has a strong um, desire to be with, you know, this child. And she kind of finds ways to sneak into the, and kind of volunteer at the newborn facility and stuff. So when events take place in The Giver and Jonas kind of dashes off with this child, she sets off in pursuit, and that's how part one kind of concludes. And um, through an accident, uh, she sort of loses her memories, all she knows is her name, and that's where we are in part two. And part two kind of drags a bit, I thought, with her trying to regain her memories. With with that, she sees a lot of differences between this community she ends up in in part two compared to the community she lived in. And again, it's, it's learning of these um, basic freedoms and things, and everything that was lacking uh, when she grew up, lacking emotions and, and love and things like that. But my favorite part of this this book is the, the very last sentence in part two, this character from Messenger comes in. And I was like, oh my gosh, I want to know more about this character. And I was so, so happy that the author has like come full circle and, and brought in another aspect from the earlier part of the quartet. And it's just masterfully the way she wove all these parts in together. And then finally we find ourselves in part three, where we'll find out what happens to Gabriel. We're reunited with, with Jonas and Kira. And again, you learn more about this evil kind of character and what's going to happen. And I don't want to go any more into that. But it was just masterfully woven, everything, bringing everything together and, and just tying it up in this neat little package. Something she never really did in the first three. She always left off these threads and you wondered... It was sort of left to the reader to kind of maybe to make that decision or figure out what happened to these characters. So now she's kind of brought it all together for us. So very well written. When I first uh, encountered this series, the first three books, I actually listened to an audio rather than reading physical copies of. And I think that really affected my feeling of the pacing of these books. It made them much slower. 
I think it might not have been quite so slow if I had actually read a physical copy of it. I think the pacing was just right for the setting and the world building and everything. So I highly recommend this series. I would say if you can, read them back to back. The um, This one's about just under 400 pages, but the first three in the quartet are, I think, under 200 pages. Again, it's uh, like a middle grade. These are very short chapters. It's facing, and it's it, it reads pretty quickly even for this size one, but the first three are are fairly short and very quick reads, so I think you'd enjoy it if you read the thing as a whole. And um, yeah, uh, this particular one I gave uh, four stars to, like I said, just because it's a little slow in the middle of it, but overall I would give the series about four to four and a half stars out of five. So I hope you enjoyed uh, this review. I hope I haven't done too many spoilers. I try to keep it pretty simple, but it's well worth reading and finding out a lot more of the details that I haven't mentioned. So I hope you enjoyed it, and thanks for watching. Bye-bye.